All right, what is going on, everybody? My name is Jordan. I'm joined today by Scott, and we are here to give a sneak peek uh, into a big update coming to SaberSim uh, here, if you're watching this video right after it came out, uh, in the next week or so here. Uh, should be a pretty big update here, delivering some new speed, some new power to the tool. Uh, if you've been using beta in the past month or so, you've probably already seen this a bit, but we wanted to give everybody a preview here today of what to expect and some of the big uh, benefits that are coming with this update. So uh, Scott, I'll go ahead and just kick it right over to you so we can jump in here. Mm -hmm. uh, first things first, like, what was your kind of inspiration for some of these changes? What was your goal with, with these, these updates? So we know how important the ability to move fast is in DFS, especially with NBA being in full swing right now. And we wanted SaberSim to feel more like an actual browser. Like, you know, you're using it in a browser, but we wanted it to feel fast and responsive the same way that a browser is. So we were really looking at ways that we could get you access to the slates you're playing, the builds you're running, the contest you're entering as fast and as all in one place as we possibly could, which kind of inspired this thing that we've internally been calling Saber Browser. That's not like an official name or anything, at least not yet. Maybe after this video it will be, um, which I think does all of those things we were trying to do in a way that SaberSim has never been able to, to do before. It's been a pretty big breakthrough in terms of how we save and store uh, you know, your your adjustments and the lineups themselves to be able to keep everything in one centralized view that in my mind uh, makes it so people who may be using multiple browser tabs to have like different slates open in SaberSim may never have to do that again. Um, I think we've made such great improvements here that you can kind of work out of one tab and uh, do all the stuff that you need to do on any given night uh, effectively and with more speed than ever before. Yeah, and if you've ever played like multiple slates or multiple sites at the same time using SaberSim, you're probably already familiar with some of these pain points. You either get used to, you know, having the multiple tabs open or the multiple browser windows open or just switching slates in between everything you're doing, which then it has to load and it's kind of slow. And, you know, you might forget your showdowns when you're late swapping your main slates mm -hmm. or things like that. So should just make it a lot easier to do many things at once as most DFS players often are here. So uh, let's go ahead and, and dive into it and, and take a look sure. here. So, I mean, what you see here, the biggest major change right off the bat before we even do anything is that the slates that you're playing, oh, did I just, I just increase that size? I'm sorry. The slates that you're playing are now in tabs across the top of the screen. So instead of this being your builds, this is now all of the slates that you may actively be working on at any given time. And they show up here simply by opening a slate. So I come in here to the slate selector and just pick a different slate that I haven't actually started playing yet. It will then appear right up here in the top menu with all of your builds, favorites, and contests in the row below that for that particular slate. Uh, you can remove these as you want, and very soon you'll be able to reorder them. Uh, cool. But you can keep whatever slates you're working on right now front and center and kind of remove the stuff that you're not focused on. But always, I think for me personally, if I've got like five slates going, just having those five tabs open is mm -hmm. huge for me, remembering what I need to do for a given night, right? Just having those open keeps it in mind. Okay, I've got NBA at 6.30, then I've got NHL at 7. There's an NHL showdown coming up at 9. Yeah. With this, you know, Indiana game, I mean, Indiana game at 6.30. So that's like been super helpful to me. Um, just to have that there and it keeps like, it just keeps you organized, right? Even mm -hmm. without any of the other changes we've made, I think that's a huge, huge benefit to what we've got here. Yeah. I mean, it, um, it helps, you know, what, what's coming up next. I think that's the exact yeah. way that I'm going to use it too, is, you know, I've got these late swaps and these slates coming up, um, things like that. So yeah, very cool. I think this doesn't matter without the speed improvements that we have also made to loading slates. Um, I'll demonstrate more of this after we do some builds for NBA and NHL, mm -hmm. but I'm just going to use the ones from this morning that I've already built as an example. When I switch from here, this basketball, to this tennis slate, I mean, we are loading these in, that was what, a second and a half that loaded? Mm -hmm. That would have taken eight to 10 seconds before, which yeah. doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're in the middle of a late swap or you're rushing, or you're just trying to like get work done, that 10 seconds can feel like an eternity. 
but you can switch between these very, very quickly. Like you saw that again, that was about two seconds, mm -hmm. come back to tennis here. And again, it was like less than two seconds. I can get back to work on this. That speed is even more dramatically improved if you're working on builds within the same slate. Um, so you see here just real quick, if I'm switching back and forth between, I mean, look at that, it's basically instant that my mm -hmm. build, that my lineups reloaded, which is a speed we've never had before. So think about doing a late swap for an NBA slate, right? Yeah. You can now have, it's now totally viable to have four, five, six different late swaps for different contests you're playing and actually try to manage all of those simultaneously because you're not getting bogged down with like a minute of waiting, just clicking from one to the next to the next, which I think is a huge, huge benefit of what we've done here. Yeah, it should be really useful as well if you do like research builds or, you know, if you have information in a different slate or a different build that is useful for what you're doing elsewhere, um, research builds come to mind. Sometimes, you know, if I'm playing uh, multiple slates for an NFL main slate on Sunday morning and I go to build my FanDuel lineups and I see somebody pop in those lineups that I had none of on DraftKings, all of a sudden I'm a little curious, like, is the salary different on DraftKings? You know, was the ownership different on DraftKings? I want to go back. Right now, I know that that process of loading the other slate, loading the build, all of that's going to take some time, and I just say forget it. With this, you can actually bounce back to just what you did just a bit before, load it yep. in a couple seconds, take a quick look, and bounce back uh, to, to make any other changes. So very, very cool, again, if you're exactly. you know, navigating multiple tabs here, multiple builds, slates, things like that. So I think even if we had just done this, Jordan, this would be a major, major improvement to SaberSim, but we didn't mm -hmm. stop there because again, we wanted to keep this idea of a browser like experience in play. Right. And if you're using a browser, Chrome doesn't tell you, oh, well, you can only use this one tab right now because some action is going on. Right. Yeah. So I think we've made what might be the single most requested uh, thing I've ever seen in SaberSim a reality. And also now that I've used it, maybe the coolest thing we've ever done before on Saber Simmer Reality, where I can come here to this 630 NBA slate for tonight. I can kick off my build here. Mm -hmm. And while that's running, I can now go to my NHL slate that's coming up later. Um, and I can do whatever work I need to do here, set this up, kick this build off here mm -hmm. now, and then go start working on my NBA showdown here. Yeah. Uh, and you start doing that work there. Um, and then when I, you know, if I come back here, I can see it's probably still building up. So it's still, it, we, we pick right back off where it was before this will eventually finish, you know, while I'm, while I'm gone as the NHL one will. So you can now build on every slate you're playing simultaneously. Uh, so again, you're not being delayed by some, uh, by the, by the, uh, the restriction we've put on, which is one build at a time. We've actually been able to, to solve that problem. So you can now build simultaneously across multiple slates and then you know be able to get back to work when the, the first one is finished. Uh, I think that's a huge, huge improvement. And again, think about late swap, right? Yep. This is huge for NBA late swap. If you've got four, five, six different builds, you can kick all those off simultaneously uh, and be able to get uh, six different contests uh, late swapped in the same amount of time that it was taking you to do you know one maybe one and a half before um which is really really cool come back here you see this one is just now finishing right now um we don't have any way to alert you yet that one build has finished and another one Got it. in another tab we will get that eventually um but for now i think just having this ability is a huge huge win for us yeah i mean as somebody that tends to play every showdown on an NFL Sunday. I know we're wrapping up NFL season here uh, and having all of the different tabs open and trying to keep track of everything and kicking builds off kind of one at a time. Uh, yeah, huge to just be able to open all those up, kick all of those builds off all at the same time. So the other thing here, it looks like we are doing is contest sims running in mm -hmm. multiple tabs at once. You want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. So the same thing that we mentioned before with builds uh, will also work with contest sim. So I've got this contest sim here for NHL I've created. I'm going to run this one here in this tab. So we'll let that start. I'm going to come back to the NBA build that we started working on before. Um, and I've already got a contest sim created over here as well. So I can run that one here in this tab. We'll let those two things run. Same as with builds. We don't have any kind of notification in app when one completes. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of need to, you know, wait for it to finish. And then, you know, once you don't see this loader anymore, then you know that they've completed, but they will continue running concurrently in opposite tabs. 
In this case, you see here that my hip check already finished, so I came back, it was done. I mean, as you know, our contest sims, they finish often in 30 seconds or less, you know, depending on the, the slate. So before you know it, they'll be done. But I came over here, my contest sim, I'm sorting by my contest sim metrics, mm -hmm. and I'm good to go, right? I can do whatever I want to do here in this slate, put this together, you know, put together my 20 lineups real fast, save those to my contest, then come back over here to NBA, and my contest sim over here has also completed. So I got my flagship, maybe I switch yeah. win rate, um, which for like NBA late swap, for instance, is going to be huge, right? Because again, if you've got three, four, five different uh, builds you've created for different contests that you want to model or sim or whatever, instead now instead of having to wait for one to finish before you can go to the next uh, because we literally couldn't run them simultaneously now we will actually run them simultaneously um the more you're running it may take a little bit longer to finish them because we have to like can't run like an infinite number of contest sims simultaneously right. right so there comes a point where they get queued instead but you uh, if you're using the app normally you likely won't run into that uh that queuing problem it's like only if there's like hundreds of contest sims i think where you might notice a, a problem don't go running hundreds of contest sims. Yeah. It's, it's a, yeah no, no I, it's, it's 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 great uh for like like i said late swap or just playing multiple slates on a night yeah it should speed up the process for most normal use and it, it should enable you also to do some things that maybe right now aren't possible i mean a lot of my nba videos i've released this year i talk about people combining you know more contests into more builds and using kind mm -hmm. of a generic contest sim to sim all of your lineups at once just purely because of some of the practical issues with trying to handle all of those things on the current version of the app this really frees you up mm -hmm. to really get a little more specific about individual contests and to handle things uh, on that basis it's also remarkably fast to move around as you've been kind of jumping back and forth between these slates yep. and really seeing it here now. I mean, not only is it cool to have these different processes running in different tabs, but even the process of just checking to see if the thing yep. you did on one tab is done is very quick to get over yep. there and then come back. Yeah, you will see, uh, you know, if you if you have not opened a slate at all today, you or like in this browser session, you may notice like a little bit of more of a delay. But once you've opened it for the first time and opened a build for the first time, we're mm -hmm. basically caching it so that you can get back to it very quickly. Um, this this CSGO slate from this morning or CS2 slate might be a good example where we have to give it a second to load because I've never I haven't loaded it during this session. So that you saw that took what four seconds to load thereabouts, mm -hmm. which oh my god, four seconds. Um, but now it feels slow compared to what we're doing with some of these other slates, right? I mean, look at that. That was less than a second to get from CS2 to yeah. NBA. Like that's that's a, a sense of speed we've never had before in our app. Um, it's 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 really it's unbelievable, frankly. Um, I I can't believe we got to this point. And it's, yeah, I've been using it for the past month or so, and it's been awesome. Um, it looks like you know, apart from UI or. For regarding UI, it looks like mostly just the new tabs at the top and then the build tabs have come down. Is there anything else that has changed or maybe anything you want to point out somebody might go looking for uh, that has moved spots a little bit or anything like that here um, when people are jumping on for their first builds? Uh, so we haven't moved too much, but there are a couple of quality of life things that I think are worth noting. Okay. Um, we have brought back, uh, if you remember in Saber Sim Classic, we had these little pills for filters to show you when you had like a player filter mm -hmm. active, either, you know, for, you know, removing them or showing them. So we now have these back cool. here in the filters menu. So you can, you know, uh, manage those much easier than you could before. So I think that's a, that's just a nice quality of life thing that we've brought back, uh, which I think, you know, takes a back seat to some of these bigger things, but it's still really, really cool. Yeah. Um, we also, you may have noticed, um, that you know this contest sim defaulted to on when I created it, and we also have this button here. We are now uh, defaulting all contest sims to on. So even if you go to contests to create them, I don't have any in my contest, but I can go and create just a handful of contest sims here real quick, mm -hmm. uh, just to show you. Um, another like little quality of life thing we did, where now when you create them, they will all default to checked instead of unchecked. Very so you don't cool. have to yeah. go through and check them all and if you don't want them all on, you can uh, turn them off when you're when you've done that as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, frankly, there's a lot of small like bug fixes and UX improvements going on here that I couldn't even begin to list through because there have been so many over the past month or so. Yeah. Um, 
but those are those are a couple of the the big ones. Um, the one that I think shows really well, though, that I'm going to that I'm going to do here real quick is an improvement we made to how min uniques work. Mm-hmm. So for the longest time, min uniques have been great at like large numbers of min uniques. We solve for five, six, seven really fast. But smaller numbers of min uniques, like two or three, have always been a little bit slower just because of all the various permutations we have to go through to get there. Right. We had a pretty big breakthrough there, which, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, which I think can be really effective for NBA late swap where the number <laughs> of min uniques is going to be lower. Um, but I wish I had like a side-by-side to show the difference here. But now if you're trying to solve for like two min uniques on a large pool, it will do that solve. Um, give this just actually it looks like all 20 of my lineups are already unique. So that's a terrible example. Let's go to three. There it goes. So it's now solving like that was. It's almost no second. processing Jordan. time at all. Yeah. It's- yeah. Whereas before for two and three, it would think about it and take you know upwards of four to five seconds mm-hmm. for those smaller numbers of min uniques. Um, you know, if you add a bunch of min and max exposures and filters and things, you may still see a bit of a slowdown, but the speed here is dramatically improved yeah. from where it was before, which again, goes back to the idea of making this feel like a more cohesive, fast experience so that you can get your lineups in before lock. Uh, the way you want to do it without the tool fighting against you, right? And I think, and just to clarify, also the quality of the lineups has not changed. Like you're getting the same lineups you would have gotten before. We're just solving it much faster than we were before. Awesome, cool. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like a, a big improvement. I'm very excited to to sink my teeth in. I know this has been on beta here for a few weeks um, with some of my time off and just, you know, life stuff. I haven't had an opportunity to really dive in. So I'm, I'm going to be jumping in here with everybody when this does release in the next uh, week or so is kind of what we're shooting for. During that time, this is, of course, still on the beta environment. So our pro and ultimate subscribers uh, that maybe are are watching this video here and haven't had a chance to play around with this on beta, if you want to be a part of that kind of final last week of testing here before this goes live, you can do that there. Um, But we just wanted to to give everybody a a quick sneak peek and an overview of what this is going to look like uh, before it does go live. And and hopefully you're as excited about it as we are here. So, uh, Scott, any final thoughts? I know you guys have worked really hard on this, Uh, the, the whole community appreciates you guys but anything we didn't get to or any final thoughts you wanted to mention here um i i will just say if you have not used our beta site or even if you have been using our beta site i would really strongly recommend if you have the opportunity to get on here and and try it out both because i, I think it's a massive improvement but mm-hmm. also every every person trying it out gives us more data about how well it's performing um and if you do get on there and you run into issues don't hesitate to smash the report a problem button right here Mm -hmm. to let us know uh, that you ran into some issue, send us a report. So we know about it. We have a, you know, we have that pro beta feedback channel to get feedback on it, but nothing uh, replaces the bug reports that we get because then we can actually try to debug issues. And we know that there are thousands of you out there using SaberSim thousands of different ways. We can yep. test for weeks and months and years and still not do everything that SaberSim users are going to do. So you coming on to the beta site and actually using your process to make sure that you can actually still do what you want to do is the most invaluable thing that you can do for us right now. So that's all I would say is if you get some time, um, please jump in there and try it out and, and let us know if you run into any issues so we can try to get those fixed as soon as possible. Awesome. Cool. And of course, if you have stumbled upon this video and you are not a SaberSim subscriber at all, and you're checking us out for the first time via this video, uh, we do have a free five-day trial on our site, sabersim.com. You're welcome to sign up, uh, check us out for a free five days. But uh, otherwise, Scott, thank you for taking the time to hop on and and walk me through this here. Uh, Very excited to see this hit production in the next week or so. Uh, And until then, everybody, thanks, and we'll see you later.